high-priced freight is not always on the load board. The high-priced freight is with the brokers that have dedicated carriers for them. <coughs> so once you get out here and get on your own, if you ever do, to all you people out there that want to do this, Build relationships with your brokers. That's my lesson for today. Build relationships with brokers. Don't get on the load boards and just try to find the highest paying freight. You know, try to find yourself four or five decent brokers to work with. Build relationships with, with brokers within the agents that you do work with. And, uh, you will, uh, you'll be successful. I got a relationship with this guy right here, which I'm trying to build, and uh, I'm trying to, uh, I got a relationship with uh, this guy named Pete over at uh, C.H. Robinson. He's a, uh, he's a real good dude too. He, uh, he looks out for me a lot. You know, I, I kind of feel bad because I haven't moved any freight for him this past week, but We'll get back at them this week, that's for sure. You know, and I at least move a load for them once or twice a week. But yeah, Pete's a good guy. And, you know, I'm trying to build relationships over at JB Hunt. And ironically enough, come January 15th, we'll be able to sign up with Schneider. It's going to be ironic all on their freight considering I got an old Schneider truck and an old Schneider trailer. So, <coughs> still with that cost, I tell you what, I can't wait till it's gone. But, yeah, like I said, build relationships and just keep working with the same brokers over and over again. Not only will you build your relationships and get the freight that you're really wanting to get, but it'll be easier come tax time because you won't have a million 1099s coming to your door. truckstop.com as a load board with multiple brokers on it you can always use that as a filling you know if you need to find a load to get yourself back home or whatever you know sometimes you got to do it you can't help it you know you don't want to have to dead head back home but you also don't want shitty freight coming back home so wait that's my lesson for today we're gonna uh go ahead and quit on rambling because we've been rambling on enough already and we're going to get on down the road we're doing our normal little route that we use every day to get to the places we need to go like Novi and Canton and Romulus and all this and that and then uh, once the sun comes up I'm going to go ahead and put my camera up in the window and uh, we'll get us some footage heading on down there probably a little bit of the same stuff y'all have seen before but I do like to throw footage in there from time to time, so we're gonna get on down the road and uh, we'll see you out there. Later, y'all. All right, y'all. So we're loaded, get ready to get rolling, and uh, yeah, we had a little bit of miscommunication so far with this load. Not really that big of a deal, but it happens in this business. My appointment time was between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. And I told my broker, Ryan over there at JB Hunt that I'd be there at 645. He's like, oh, perfect, great, that's awesome. So, I got here at 645 like I told him I would be. Come to find out, Mobus Motors or whatever, uh, they don't open until 8 a.m. So, uh, I sat here, waited, do it in sleeper burst so I can split it if I need to. I'm still waiting for the next 12 minutes and I'll have two hours on the sleeper birth mode. So once that hits, I'll get on down the road. We have an appointment time of 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. for delivery today down in normal Illinois. And both addresses I got don't show up on my Garmin GPS, which is kind of a pain in the butt, but... So I just got on Google Maps and looked for something that was nearby and once I get close I'll 
hit the Google Map directions you now and use that to get to where I need to actually be. But I have it set pretty much next door on the main road to where I'm going. So it shouldn't be a problem with the GPS. I mean, it's self-explanatory on the highway. It's all highways I've driven before. You know, jump down here, take, get it back on 275, run that 14, 20, or 14 to 23, 14 to 94. Run 94, the long haul, all the way over into uh, Indiana, and then Illinois, where it turns into 80. Take 80 to 55, head south on 55, and then we'll run that all the way down. So, but we're gonna head on out. I got the old camera set up for footage. So we'll uh, get some footage on this run, and uh, yeah, we'll see where this day takes us. I was thinking about getting this truck washed possibly because it's kind of filthy right now. And I was sitting there, I got my mirrors cleaned off a little bit so I can see out of them and I don't get no crazy reflection at night. The only thing I hate about this truck, and it's the one little tiny spe spectacle that I do hate, is when I'm using my washer fluid on this thing, it squirts on my driver's side mirror. So I get my driver's side mirror all cleaned off. And then I'll use my uh, fluid as I'm going down the road and spray right on that. It's the only one thing I hate. The Cascadia I drove for Continental, it was the same way. I see the newer Freightliner's got this little shield right here. I'm thinking about maybe trying to uh, fabricate myself something like that so I can uh, block the wash of fluid and the beer. Somewhere down the line. But we're going to get on down the road and uh, we'll see y'all out there. Later. What's up, y'all? So, we made it down to normal Illinois. And we're at Rivian Motors, where we're making our delivery. And yes, our appointment is between 5 and 8 p.m. But, we're here, it's 3.17. And this is what we're dealing with. There is probably about, oh, I'd say 
15 to 20 trucks in front of me that are here to be unloaded. That's what shortages are doing. And when I say shortages, I'm talking about shortages of people. Come on, people. Get out there and go back to work. All you're doing is causing shortages for you and your life by not working. You know? I mean, let's let's take a look at the chain reaction here. Us trucks are sitting out here in docks waiting to get unloaded, but can't get unloaded because there's not enough people working unloading the stuff. So if our stuff's not getting unloaded onto these docks to go out to the stores, that means all y'all sitting at home not working, you guys can't get your shit. So... But we're going to sit here, we're going to climb to the bunk and uh, take a nap, I guess. I don't know how we're going to figure out our clock for our 8.30 p.m. pickup. You know, I was hoping we'd get here and uh, get unloaded and maybe be out of here before 5 o'clock. But this is the most trucks I think I've ever seen waiting to get unloaded at a place before. So we probably going to end up spending the night here in this parking lot. Which is unfortunate, but at least we got plenty of food. We got coffee for the morning. You know, we're prepared. I stopped and got fuel, so that's all set and ready to go. So, yeah. Be prepared. Be prepared for situations like this. Because you never know when you're going to end up sitting in a parking lot overnight and not be able to walk inside a truck stop. Um... So yeah, we'll keep you updated with what's going on. Be prepared, like I said. And uh, yeah, we'll go watch some TV, hey? All right, y'all. We'll see y'all. Yeah, we'll see y'all later. Keep you updated what happens with this load. Like I said, we're gonna probably be here for a while, so it is what it is, right? See y'all later. What's happening, y'all? So. This has been a complete shit show so far. I've been here for probably about four and a half hours now, and I finally got into the dock. I've been sitting here waiting, and a guy came out in the parking lot and started directing traffic, getting all the trucks all out of the middle of the, uh, the parking lot. Because when I got here, trucks were scattered all over the place. I mean, it was one truck here, one truck there, one truck there, one truck here, one truck there. So, <coughs> guy came out finally and started getting trucks backed into a spot. So, they were out of the way. And he came up to my truck and he's like, yeah, we need to start moving people around. I'm like, well, I was like, what's going on with getting unloaded? I'm like, I've been here since three three o'clock today and he's like um he's like I don't know he's like I'm just a uh, spotter I'm like well can you at least tell me is everyone getting there unloaded he's like no probably not I'm like I was like okay well that's not good I was like what do I do then you know you know I'm just sitting here like what do I what am I gonna do I got a load booked for first thing in the morning at 8 30 a.m. And he's like, well, after you get parked into a, uh, a spot, he's like, go inside and uh, talk to the lady because she's doing appointments right now. So I go inside after I finally get into a spot. And I asked the lady, I'm like, where am I at in line? She's like, well, what's your phone number? So I tell her my phone number and she starts going through the bills. And my paperwork was in a pile of bills that weren't lined up for an appointment. So I'm like, yeah, I have an appointment. I was like, my, my rate con says between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. and she asked the dude about the number that was on the uh, BOL and lo and behold my appointment shows in their system at 6 p.m. so she got me right into the dock so I'm here in the dock and red lighted and unfortunately I am, oh, let me front here. Unfortunately, I am out of hours. So I'm hoping the pilot truck stop that's about 10 minutes away will uh, 
have some spots still open. I'm not expecting it. You know, and if they don't have any, hopefully they'll have it reserved and I can just pay for a spot. It's either that or head back north towards my, uh, towards where I got to go to because there's a rest area on the way that has parking. But this time of night, you never know where you're going to find a park. And I'm going to be driving on PC because FMCSA regulation states if you are out of hours and you are leaving a shipper slash receiver, you may use personal conveyance to the nearest safe place. So I got to find myself a place to park. I don't know if I can get away with just staying in this parking lot, but... I mean, I'm sure I could. I could holler at the guy checking people in and checking people out. So, but I'm gonna climb back here in this bunk. I've been just hanging out, watching TV since I uh, since I got my boredom has got the best of me, and I've been eating. And I've had tacos, and I made uh. I sat here and ate some of my uh, Doritos. Thank God my metabolism still high. So, but we'll see how long it takes them to get these thirty pallets off the truck. They're double stacked, so it should be uh, fifteen stacks. And uh, hopefully, we get us out of here soon. But with that, y'all, wish me luck on parking, and uh, we'll see once we finally get parked and get out of here. Later. Good morning, y'all. As you can see, we are moving again. But we're still over here at uh, Rivian Motors. Because this is where we slept last night. They finally got the truck unloaded around 10 p.m. or so. Which is kind of ridiculous. <coughs> Considering I got here at o'clock yesterday so unfortunately my game plan got killed which I hate it when that happens because I try to plan everything out so I know where I'm staying I know what I'm bringing back I know what I'm picking up the next day and then this happens but the when I don't plan and I just fly by night, everything goes smooth with that the shipper and receiver. And then I don't have a plan. So well, we gotta go over here and we gotta check out. down the road now finally. Let me get this whole seat belt on here. Alright. So last night though, after we finally were done getting unloaded and we got everything all set up and we we're already asleep. About one in the morning I woke up and my generator had stopped running. I'm like, well, that ain't good. So I got out, started right back up, got back in the truck, turned the heater back on. Generator died again. So I went out there and I'm like, well, it's got fuel in it. It's not one that doesn't sound like it. It sound like it was getting sparked. 
So I'm like, you know what? Let me check the oil real quick because it has the safety on it. It's a it's a two-stroke motor, so it uh it uses the oil to keep the engine lubricated while it's mixing with the with gasoline. Because I think that's how it works. But uh, yeah. I pulled the dipstick on it and there was no oil in it. So I grabbed the two the four uh four cycle of oil that I had in the in my side box and put a little bit in put what I had left in that container in it. It's what it's the oil that actually came with the generator. And uh yeah that didn't help. It still wouldn't start. But there still wasn't no oil registered on the dipstick either, so I'm hoping that we just gotta put some oil back in the generator and she will run again. In Illinois at the Post Distribution Center. I'm going to readjust this a little bit. There we go. I'm going to go back up that way. There we go. Nope. There, that's better. 
So, like I was saying, we're at the Post Distribution Center here in Wilmington, Illinois. We're getting loaded up for a load going back to the Rite Aid Distribution Center there in Waterford, Michigan. Well, we got about, oh, 7,000 pounds. I think it was said like 6,100 something. So it'll probably be between six and 8,000, somewhere around there. It's uh, another Coyote Logistics load. So we'll see how things go. Our last Coyote load was kind of a uh, kick in the butt, but we were able to charge our own lumper fee on that one. We uh, got there, and the people there down in uh, Lima, Ohio, was, from, was another dark container load. Another long load. I think I was on the dock that day for, oh, I'm going to say probably about five, six hours waiting for them to load the trailer. Or no, no, it was another seven-hour day. Another seven-hour day on the dock. They took forever. The weather was horrible out. I had I was late for my uh, my delivery because of the hours of service because of the shipper taking forever. But when I got down to Lima, Ohio, for all y'all that don't know where Lima is or what Lima I'm going to, I'm sure there's a bunch of Limas. But anyways, that's not the point. Point is, I got down to Lima, Ohio, the small little grocery store distribution place, and uh, they were uh, they came to the door. After I backed into the dock and gave them my paperwork, they're like, are you unloading this? I'm like, I didn't have any intentions on unloading it. He's like, yeah, we're not allowed to touch the dark container loads. I'm like, well, that's no good. <coughs> so, I sat there for a little bit. Guy comes back out. He's like, uh, he's like, yeah, well, uh, you're going to have to unload this yourself. I'm like, well, let me get a hold of my broker real quick. And it was the same guy that I dealt with before they're the same guy that I'm dealing with on this load it was him I was dealing with on that load so I called him up and I told him hey they're wanting me to unload this I'm like do I get to charge a lumper fee or anything he's like he's like well how much would you want I'm like well you know from past experiences on these dark container loads because they're all four loaded it's just boxes loaded into the trailer uh stacked up so I was like, I've done this load before and I've had places charge me $500 for, uh, for lumper fee. So I was like, let's start at 500. So I sat there after I got off the phone with him about 15, 20 minutes and still no response. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go inside and start getting this trailer unloaded because I'm not making no money just sitting here at this dock. Got in there, started unloading after I was about an hour in. I called the broker back. I was like, so what's going on with that uh with that lumper fee? He's like, uh he's like, I can get you that five hundred. I'm like, alright, bet. I was already an hour or probably about a quarter of the way down getting the trailer unloaded. So I got was able to charge my own lumper fee on that load. Five hundred dollar lumper fee. It took me took me by myself two hours to unload the trailer and that's taking pallets into the trailer stacking the boxes on the pallets and then wait for the dock workers at that little grocery store place to pull the pallets back off the uh, trailer <coughs> so yeah I, I don't understand why it took uh took dark container almost eight hours seven hours to load my trailer when it took me two hours by myself to unload it so Get out here and get what you're worth. Don't work for free. That's for sure. I mean that that's a uh that's a lot of work uh having unload floor loaded boxes, especially when stuff's stacked real tall and I'm a short dude to begin with. So But we got the red light. We got in the dock we got in the dock right away as soon as we got here. We went in there, checked in, they gave me a dock. Came out here back then, went inside, used the restroom, got all freshened back up after sleeping in the truck last night, and uh, got out here, had the red light. So we're going to sit here and wait for this trailer to get loaded, and then uh, we're going to head back up to Waterford and see if we can get into the Rite Aid Distribution Center early. From reviews I've read on Google Maps, it looks like people get in and out of there, no problem. I should be able to get unloaded today and that way I can start fresh tomorrow yeah that Brian guy I told y'all about earlier he uh 
Says he's got more loads coming back down here to Rivian and Automotive. And, you know, it sucks having to sit there all day, but you know what? You get the detention. And if it's all the same day and I can sleep there in the yard, then it's worth it. Because, you know, as long as I'm making at least $1,000 a day, I can support the business and my family, you know? So it it's worth it in the end. You know, I, it would suck if I had to drive down there one day and deliver the next day. And then it takes them almost all day long to unload me the next day. You're losing money at that point. It, it's definitely not worth it, you know, to set there. You, you got to get what you're worth. So, I mean, if something like that's to happen, you know, if, I already know now. If they tell me, hey, the appointment's for the next day. I'm going to be like, well, I need at least, you know, I, w I want at least $2,000 on that load then because they're going to be all day long. I need to get paid for that day plus, you know, their $50, $50 an hour, $40 an hour detention costs, you know, it ain't worth it to sit there all day because after you only get paid after or up to five hours on detention. So, yeah, it, it's definitely not worth it. So, you know. Pay attention where you go. And, you know, you're out here. You make your decisions. You can go back to this place. You know, I'm, I'm trying to develop a relationship with the broker. And, you know, if I got to sit there all day long, as long as it's the same day, that time I'm waiting there to develop a relationship with a broker, it's worth it to me just for the simple fact that when times get slow, that broker is not going to be pulling just random drivers to pull his freight. He's going to go with people that he's worked with before and that he can trust. So, relationships is everything out here. I, I've stressed that a lot in this video. So, build your relationships, get your money, know your worth. So, with that, y'all, I'm going to climb back here in this bunk and uh, I'm going to go through the video footage that I got yesterday and uh, delete what I'm not going to use. That way I have some room on there to get some footage today and uh, we'll make a full video out of this. All right, y'all. See you. Soon. See you back out there later. All right, y'all. We're getting ready to head on down the road. We're loaded. We literally have five pallets, four pallets, maybe six, somewhere around there. I didn't really count them when I was in there. There was. Uh, I went in there to uh, pick my strap up off the ground, and I realized those aren't my straps. I don't know where those straps came from. I remember I put my strap in the in the cab the other day, so. I got two more straps. They're the, they're the pool straps, not the ratchet straps, but hey, strap's a strap regardless of what it, kind of strap it is. <coughs> Our total load, though, is 5,513.75 pounds. That's what our total weight is. Going back to the Rite Aid Distribution Center. I was re-looking at the reviews for the Rite Aid Distribution Center and uh, I'm starting to wonder if I'm really going to be able to get unloaded early or not. It's not really looking like it, so I'll probably just stop and get a truck wash on the way home and uh, go park the truck for the night and uh, hopefully they'll get me unloaded real quick tomorrow. A lot of the people are saying to uh, get there at 6 a.m. no matter what time your appointment is. So we might take them take them up on that uh, little bit of advice. I don't know. Depending on what time it is when I get back in the area, what time my clock or how much time I have left on my clock, I might try to deliver. If they let me, they let me. If they don't, they don't. You know, it is what it is. I live in the area, so no big deal. On another note, as far as my generator goes, I'm hoping that it's just. Uh, and oil to get it back running again. You know, if I can get another four months out of that, I know I just bought it and it's been beaten up a little bit because it came loose back there from the straps and got hit by the trailer a couple times. And it's kind of muddy. I mean, it's it hasn't really got hit too bad with the elements. I mean, the top half has more stuff on the top there, which I don't know how that happened, but whatever. I was uh. I was looking at a couple different APUs, and they're about $11,000 installed right here in Illinois. And, uh, 
I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is, you know, I made a goal this year to save up money for the, uh, you know, just to build the business and uh, get an APU for the truck. Now, I know the motor is going to be needed to re be rebuilt soon, probably. I mean, I got 1,355,000 and 68 miles on this truck right now. <coughs> so, but I was doing the math, and if I put away 2750 for four months, that would be about $11,000, and I would get an APU put on the truck before summertime. I just need my generator to work throughout the winter time so I can keep uh, keep the truck plugged in on cold nights and not have to idle all night long like I did last night. You know, not to mention a rebuild is really starting to worry me because uh, I thought my phone went sideways because I started to lose fuel mileage. But it's weird because my fuel mileage started to go down after I had the fuel filter replaced. That and real cool temperatures are what I've been dealing with. So maybe it's the additives that are in the diesel that make the fuel burn quicker. I mean, I'm still under seven miles to a gallon, but I was, well, I mean, I was bobtailing and getting like 7.8, but I was doing the power only load. So I don't know, it just worries me a little bit. might uh, end up doing an oil sample sooner than uh, need be just to see if I got any fuel dilution maybe I got an injector leaking or something but I haven't been seeing no black smoke in the exhaust but we'll figure it out you know it might just like I said be the cold weather but uh, we'll keep you uh, we'll keep you informed but with that y'all I'm gonna get on down the road and uh, get this back to Waterford see you out there later
finally made it to the Rite Aid Distribution Center. And lo and behold, we can't get the load off the truck early. So, our appointment time's at 8 in the morning. I think I'll get here probably about an hour earlier, maybe even about 6 a.m. So I can get checked in and uh, hopefully get this off my truck and uh, get something else back on the truck for tomorrow. I guess we'll uh, see what happens. You know, I'm, I'm really hoping that this place don't take forever to get me unloaded. And I'm hoping that dealing with the lumpers ain't going to be too much of a pain in the butt either. But since we can't get it off the truck tonight, we're just going to go ahead and uh, head on home. Because I'm not staying the night here to get the, uh, I'm not staying the night here to get the, to wait until, uh, to wait until the morning rolls around. Yeah, I got, I got to get some, uh, two cycle oil for this, uh, generator and see if that works. And I got some in my shed, so that should be set there. We got two days worth of footage. It's been a, uh, it's been a smooth trip, all except for the generator uh, dying on us last night. I'm gonna go ahead and wait till this light turns red. <coughs> but yeah, it's just a. Uh, Quick little drive back to the Dollar General from Williams Lake Road here in Waterford. And, uh, my throat's so dry. Uh, there we go. This car pulled over the line. Idiot. And then they wave at me like, ah, I didn't do it. too much to say. We're going to go ahead and cut this video right here. It's been a long one, I'm sure. So hopefully you stayed uh, you stayed around to watch it all, if it turned out to be a long one. I don't know how much footage I'm going to actually use from the whole trip. But, well, that was kind of sick. Old school black car with red underbody lights on it. That was sexy. Well, yeah, thanks, thanks again for uh, sticking around and uh, watching my journey down to Illinois and back. I really enjoy having y'all follow my journey. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, please be courteous to your fellow driver and hustle hard and stay humble. And with that, y'all, I'm done rambling, so we'll see y'all next time. Later.